Hey there. Everything we're told about the past 270 years of history is wrong. Well, not wrong exactly, just skewed in a way that makes it seem more complicated and mysterious than it actually is. Have you ever heard of globalization and industrialization? These are probably the most important forces that have shaped the past quarter millennium. These forces, among others, have been present for quite some time, but it's only relatively recently that they have all gone into overdrive. These phenomena are typically described as abstract, mysterious things that just sort of happened. Globalization and industrialization are not things that just happened to the world. They are things that were done to the world, first by the British Empire and now by the US Empire. The past 270 years make up the first era where we can truly say that the whole world has one overarching story. Back before the 1750s, the histories of, say, India and Northern Europe were much more distinct things. Sure, the world was always connected by things like diseases and certain luxury trade goods, but empires could rise and fall on one continent without really impacting other continents that much. But since the 1750s, we have all lived under a world system that has linked all of us more and more tightly as the years wear on. World history has functioned as a single unit since the 1750s. Unless there's some sort of apocalypse, that's the way things are going to be for the rest of the human story to come. This series and this book are an attempt to distill some of the lessons of the past 270 years so we can avoid making the same sorts of disastrous mistakes. The book goes into a lot more detail, but for the sake of this video, let's simplify radically. This whole 270 year span can be divided up quite neatly. There was the British era, and now there is the American era. The British era spanned from more or less 1756 down to almost exactly 1914. The US era began after 1945 and continues down to this day, though at the current rate of decay it could peter out by the end of the 2030s. Both of these eras were challenged in their beginnings. The French fought the British in a series of wars up until 1815, and the US Cold War with the Soviets lasted more or less from 1945 to 1989. With 2020 hindsight, however, it's clear that both the French and the Soviets were fighting a losing battle from the start. Over the past 270 years, first the British and now the United States have had every geographical, technological, financial, and even ideological advantage imaginable. The rest of the world has just been playing catch up. I've been studying the US Empire and British Empire for a number of years now, and both of these entities are a lot more powerful than is commonly known. These two periods are some of the most eventful in world history. The British period saw the spread of the Industrial Revolution with steamships, railroads, and telegraphs spanning the whole planet. The US period has seen further technological revolutions and a hyper-intensification of the globalization we already saw during the British period. For some reason, we are still encouraged to see these changes as distinct from any country, even though it was mostly British gunships that blew open every market in the 1800s, and mostly US companies that has driven the world system into everybody's pocket in this century. It is not an exaggeration to say that almost all political developments in 1750 everywhere in the world has been a reaction to either the British Empire or the US Empire. The British ran the world until 1914, and the United States has run the world since 1945. What I'm interested in, and what we should all be interested in, is this gap in the middle here. Between 1914 and 1945, no one was in charge. The result was two world wars, massacres, genocide, and the first nuclear obliteration of cities. We hear a lot about a few horrors of this period, but don't really grasp how all-encompassing the slaughter was. Even places that weren't on the front lines, like India and some parts of the Middle East, experienced mass starvation because resources were sucked up by the war effort. This period of time in world history was truly apocalyptic. There are libraries full of books on how we got to that point, but I think they tend to be a little too tight in their focus. They'll look at the months or a couple decades leading up to World War I instead of taking a look at the full arc of the pre-war century. 
The question of how a world of growing prosperity fell into a multi-decade apocalypse is a lot more complex than the crappy decisions of a few bloodthirsty aristocrats in 1914. This isn't just an academic question. We're now at a point where the control of the world that the United States has had is obviously slipping. Not as much as advertised, but significantly. If U.S. empire is ending, we really need it to go more peacefully than the British Empire did. And by we, I don't just mean U.S. citizens, I mean everybody in the world. This planet is a lot more interdependent and fragile than it was back in 1914. Another World War type event wouldn't kill tens of millions, it would kill hundreds of millions, or even billions. So we're talking about some pretty important stuff here. Tomorrow we'll talk about why the British Empire fell, and we'll start to draw out the lessons the United States needs to learn to avoid the next catastrophe. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you want to get more in-depth analysis of all these questions, click the link here to check out my book, Avoiding the British Empire, available now in paperback and on the Amazon Kindle. Thanks.